Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Six Coral Clash. Today is looking to be an exciting open bracket tournament with a Sendu badge on the line. We have a couple big hitters, such as. Uh, well, Frostbite was going to play, but it looks like they didn't actually sign up, or they could have dropped out, which is unfortunate for everyone involved. And I'm just getting the team list up now. The first match is going to be... Team Reto Toko versus Vesper. Two teams I'm not quite familiar with, but hopefully they will speak for themselves once they get into uh, the museum on Rainmaker. Just bear with me as I try to find this team list and we can see if there's any teams we should keep an eye out during the bracket stage and my predictions for who's going to make it into the finals and win that Sendu badge. It looks like the teams are made. Uh, I'm joined by Boss Hammy. He is master. And we should be getting into the first match soon here. The teams are just going to choose their weapons. I don't believe there's any weapon requirements. So I'm expecting to see plenty of sloshing machines, splash matics, uh, maybe an E leader for this Rainmaker. Just your standard meta stuff, which we've seen it before. It'll just be which team plays it the best. And I just got that team list. My prediction is Silly Kitties. Uh, Div 4 team. I have played with one of their Slayers before in a few opens, and they are quite good. I expect them to make it far into this bracket and they get a buy this round. But Vesper versus Reto Toko, the two, uh, the seventh and eighth seed. So this should be a fairly close match in the middle of our skill categories. And for those of you just joining, this is this is going to be four different rounds. Teams can earn three points per round. Each map you win gains you a point. And then that will help. That's just going to help you later on. So even if you win two, you want to make sure you play hard in that third match. Just so you can get the maximum amount of points possible. And hopefully so you can avoid some of the tougher seeds later on in the tournament. And here we are. Hopping into Museum Rainmaker here. Let's see what our very first comp is going to be. Splash, Neo Splash, Frosting Machine, and a try. And it is a mere matchup. 
I quite like mirror matchups because this is going to be very exciting for us. Ooh. Object Shredder on the, no, on the Splash. And the try going down on Team Vesper here. Areto is going to get some good map control here. Good control of objective. Tri Strike's coming out and just pushing forwards. The Tri Slasher gaining a lot of space for the team so that Reto can break the checkpoint. 30 seconds in the match, and they're already pushing, looking for a very quick sweep of the Crab Tank. Gonna get two important kills there. And now let's see if Vesper can recover here. We're gonna to try to take back her plat. A little bit of striking by the tribe, but the tribe's gonna get caught out by that splash there. And now two people down on Vesper. Booyah Bomb coming out for Red Oak. And the Rainmaker's just gonna reset, but the pressure is still being held. Leon is going to have a beautiful push there, but the try is just sharking on top of that rotator. And the Rainmaker is picked back up. Vesper's not really getting a chance to push. Beautiful Booyah Bomb going to take out the Rainmaker. But still, the slashing machine is going to get an essential pick, still holding the control of Plat here. Vesper is just getting pushed out of their own Plat, and this is this is not looking good. Both the tries are down, but Crab Tank's still up for, for both teams. How are they going to get played here? Crab Tank getting popped for Reto. Beautifully using that pressure, but the Tri Strikes not finding much effect on Vesper. Crab Tank is coming out fairly far back, just hoping to get one or two picks, help the defense here. Booyah Bomb going on that Crab Tank, Crab Tank going down, no more specials for Team Vesper, and it's down to 10 points. Reto, one more good fight, and they can win this game. Vesper a little bit low on ink right now. They need to get some map control. Tactic Cooler is coming out. Going to be great from defense, but the try is going down. The Neo is going down, and I don't think those two had any chance to get to drink. A good Rainmaker reset, but still, Crab Tank being held on by Reto. Vesper barely holding on to her plat here, getting a pushback now. But it's just a matter of time before... There we go, the Crab Tank's coming out. That's two people going down. This could be the final pick, and right, those tries are just not finding any kills that they need to. Four people up for Team Reto. Four points left. Vesper's going to need a knockout if they want to win this, and it's not looking like them, unfortunately. Two people going down, tries getting traded out, respawn getting punished there. Reto still not being able to get that very last push onto the checkpoint. Vesper holding on desperately, Crab Tank coming out, Crab Tank going down. And now it's three people down for Vesper. That's going to be the game. Reto, brilliant map control. Just look at that. They they didn't have to paint up their plat because they're too busy painting up the enemy's plat. But a good fight in the beginning, and that led to very heavy pressure later on. Let's see if they can keep this up going into map two. Inkblot Art Academy Clan Blitz. This is either going to be a very short or a very long game. As we just saw, Reto has good map control. So they're going to just be able to push in. They're going to want to hold that upper plat, let one player go back and get clams. And just throw them up while the other three hold Vesper into their spawn. Vesper, as long as they can hold a good defensive line in mid, they should be fine. They had good reaggression, good special use. It was just an unfortunate amount of pressure that Reto was able to hold. I see we're joined in chat by Rebbed Cap himself, Slayer for Silly Kiddies, maybe scoping out some potential competition for later on in the tournament. And it looks like the teams are just going to be changing up their comps a little bit here. One minute left before they are forced to use what they have selected. It'll be interesting to see if there's any mirror map or if we're going to have a bit different of a comp this time around. Personally, a Firefin Charger getting onto the tower would be huge 
for helping your defense, as you'll pressure your enemies as we try to leave air plat, get one or two picks, and that will help your mid control a lot. But Reto, I don't think they'll be afraid of any charger. You saw how up close and personal they were getting that last match, and I hope they'll do that again. Inkbrush coming out for Koya this time around. Going for a bit of a quicker weapon. And this time we're seeing a C Junior and a Gal. So still keeping uh, still keeping that splash for the crab and the sloshing machines on both sides. Neo splash coming in for Reto. Wanting those tri strikes, but wanting quick weapons. Trino Vow's under a little bit of pressure right now. He's going to get the pick before the sloshing machine can jump out. Rush going down, two people down on both sides here. But the C Junior goes down as well. Maybe Vaz from the strikes. But now we're just going to see the Neo Splash going to get some pressure. Not enough Clams to go for a score, but he doesn't need to score. He needs to paint up. Clam is now made and that Gal is isolated. You don't want to be a 52 by yourself, especially against two people. And now we're just seeing beautiful synergy coming in from the Sloshing Machine and Splash. And we're just going to hold all. Oh, unfortunately, that Uninkable is very tough to escape from. Splash is way too fast. And it's just a 52 going to hold from one side. The Brush is coming in with help of the Booyah Bomb. There's only two people left on Vesper who can defend, and that's just not going to be enough. Tri Slasher going to get a lot more paint. And beautiful Tri Strikes coming out to hold. Tri Slasher going down, but that's all right. 53 points have already been scored by Reto here, and they're just holding. Beautiful pressure. Vesper, one person up, crab tanking, not going to find a lot of effect, in fact, going down. And now that's just going to give Reto a lot of time to get their specials up and get ready for that push. Beautiful sloshing machine, two direct hits. Oh, but the tries getting traded out in exchange. Booyah Bomb is ready on the side of Vesper. Let's see if they use that for defense, and here it's coming out now. Counter Booyah, is that going to shred through? Ulsus is not. So Booyah Bomb's coming down, not finding much effect. Try strikes were used so that no one could run in on the side of Vesper. And it's just going to be a slow hold here. Try Slasher is going down, but that's all right. The brush is pressuring the Slashing Machine. Uh, the Red of Slashing Machine is going down. V Bug finding a great pick there. And it's enough to sort of get Redo back towards mid. Or is it? The Try Slasher using beautiful advantage of that wall helps with Flash so his feet, uh, feet could stay yellow. And Vesper, they just never have four people up when they need it. That's one more person going down. The Whale is up, and another. That's three in a row. We're seeing Reto just have excellent control of the enemy plat there. Tri Strikes coming out. One's unfortunately missing, one flying a bit short. Slashing Machine's going to go down. So they just broke the barrier. And now it's a 10 point penalty. That's huge, because we saw oh, an unfortunate wipeout on the side of Vesper. I don't think they'll be able to hold. Down to 21 points. Seven Clams wins the game for Reto here. And they just have it down to 12 now. Four Clams, and they have it. We're just going to stall out the basket. Here we go. That is... That is a brilliantly performed game. Once again, Vesper is just living in the enemy plat, not letting them get out of spawn as easily as they want. Reda going up 2-0, but it is play all three, and it's going to be Macomart zones. I suspect we'll see the same thing. Reto is just going to want to get control of that zone and play into the enemy plat. Just not let them leave street, keep them isolated, force them to use Booyah Bombs and Tri Strikes to temporarily retake the zone. But I suspect Reto is not going to let Vesper get control of the zone once they grab it. As for weapon comps, I'm expecting to see more of that uh, Neo Splash, the Sloshing Machine, Tri Strike Booyah Bomb is huge for zoning out your opponents. I don't think we'll be seeing that brush again. I think that's just a Clams exclusive pick to have a little bit more movement speed. Especially on Inkblot where you have two primary ways of attack, having that brush for quick flanks is really good. Really good. 
On the side of Vesper, I want to see them pull out a Charger. Uh, they're getting pressured back, and a Charger is just going to allow them to have a bit longer range to get some key picks, which they just aren't being able to find up front and personal. Reto's doing an excellent job of staying two, three people all together, so if you kill one of them, you still have two more who are going to trade it out, and maybe even find a follow-up, turning it into an advantage. And it looks like Reto is ready to go here. All four of them are readied up, and we're just waiting on Vesper to maybe change up her comp. As I said, hopefully pulling out a charger here. Firefin, great for zones. Those tri strikes being able to recap the zone with any support. But maybe some quick respawn as well on Vesper. Reto's playing really aggressive for getting huge kills. Having some more quick respawn on your team is going to help you get back into those fights quicker. One second left, and there we go. Everybody is... Our first streamed game of Coral Clash, Macomart Zones. Ballpoint and a brush. This is a very interesting comp. I was seeing Dooley Sculptures, a Flingza. That's not going to give you a lot of retaking specials on the side of Vesper compared to those Tri Strikes coming out from the Neo Splash. Good long range weapons on the side of Vesper as well. But the Tri is going to go down early on. Tri Strikes coming out. Beautiful. One, two, three. Just creating a wall. And there we go. First cap going over on the way of Reto. Gonna take that down, using the bombs to pressure out. Tries going on to the point, tries going to get taken down. And now it's the Dooley's isolated brush finding the Dooley's. That's the reason you bring the brush here. Very quick, lots of angles it can come from. 52 is just gonna find someone with that whale and the flings is down. That's your biggest retake special going down this early. Ink jets coming out from the jet. Beautiful, two people down, that's the sculptures, that's the try, that's the flings up. Vesper is staggering here, and they don't have much time left. 35 seconds. Oh, sorry. 35 points left on that zone. And here we go. Reto is just holding that pressure. Crab Tank coming in, trying to pressure him off of stack. But there's 13 points left. Less than 10 points left. All Reto has to do is paint here, and they'll win. And that's it. 100 from 0 from Reto. And that's the scary thing about playing on a Splat Zones map. If your enemy is keeping you in the spawn like that, there's no way you're going to repaint that point. Reto with a beautiful 3-0 showing that they might be someone to look out for in this tournament. And I can't wait to see how far they go. Hopefully Vesper and also pull it together in their next match. Best of luck to both teams.
welcome back from the break. For those of you who are not in the uh, Rito Toko just beat Vesper 3-0 on the stream. And now we are going to watch... Uh, I have it here. Xena buckles our shoe and Undertow Dartfish. Now, last time, Xena buckles our shoe went 1-1 one, one against fair match fair, against fair matchup dark masters and dartfish went 3-0 against fair matchup so this should be a very exciting match are we getting into it now ballpoint splash slashing machine and a stamper fairly meta comp keep that long range option against the slashing machine crack on roller a char 6 Lots of range coming out for the blue team here. And Dartfish, three of them going down right away. Beautiful pressure, and there's the wipeout! Sloshing Machine on those ledges is very, very dangerous. And four specials being held by Xena here. They have so much options. That Zipcaster can come in, they're just riding the tower, but the ballpoint close range you stop shooting just so you can get the wide range option, but one getting picked off is the ball point. Kraken Roller it has nowhere to hide. And that's a great angle to fight from with that splash. And it's the second wipeout for Xena. We're seeing why Xena is deserving of that fourth seed position they hold. A Charger Laser is going to try to find this uh, Stamper. But instead, the Stamper's just going to pop that Zipcaster. Inkjet coming out a lot of wide options. Zipcaster, Inkjet make it very hard to fight. And that's another wipeout. Xena is holding this pressure. And the only reason they can't get on the tower is Grab Tank can't get through that great. Slashing Machine stopping it so we can get that. Oh. Two going down on both sides here. So much action. So fast. And now it's just Xena going to try to hold onto this ramp, getting two essential picks here. 96 holding them off as best as they can. Ballpoint taking care of that issue. And now it's the slashing machine up close and personal. Four points left. And Xena taking it. Once again, it looks like we're going to have another matchup where one team is just holding pressure a lot better. Because right away we saw Xena didn't use any of her specials on that opening wipeout. They got one pick right away, snowballed it into an instant follow-up, and then were just able to exert so much pressure while having someone on that tower. For those of you who are wondering how to use your specials better, pay attention to Xena. Because that follow-up, that layering of specials was so huge and now our next matchup scorch forge rainmaker now there's gonna have there's gonna be a bit of a problem as many of us know in the comp scene the last little bit on the rainmaker scorch gorge is a bit of a tricky situation you have to find one or two picks before you can make the finishing push here. But I don't think that's going to be a problem for Xena. As we saw, once they got the read on Undertow, then they were able to push through. They were able to find those important players to get those picks on their specials a bit better. My prediction is going to be just another, if Dartfish isn't careful here, we're going to lose one player and Xena's just going to smell blood of the water and go for it again. I want to see a bit more of a careful rollout here on this side of Dartfish. You can't lose a player right away to a team like Xena. Gonna spell disaster. And just look at that. It's the same comp coming through. Obviously, practice. E-Leader coming out for the extra range, but they're instead gonna go with a Octobrush. A lot of close range options coming on the side. The Stamper, the Octobrush. That's not necessarily going to be the best against a team like... There we go. The 96 is going down already and the Zipcaster is coming out. The Zipcaster is going to be punished by the Brush, but it doesn't matter because that's a wipeout. Once again, you lose 
one player against Xena, and that can spell the end. Because right now, the 96 is down again. The slashing machine, that's going to be a pick onto the Stamper. It's a 3v2, just a brush and the Sniper. And without anyone to protect the Eat Leader, it's going down. Brush is going down. Inkjet is the ball point one of the better splat wings. I haven't seen it much in comp, but Xena is making it sing here. Zipcaster is coming out, going to go for a wipeout on the of Xena, and there we go. The Rainmaker's going down, but those jumps are coming in. This could be a bit of a risky situation. One goes down, two goes down. A good cleanup by the Octo Brush, but the Rainmaker's getting opened up by the side of Xena. Octo Brush is going down, and the Stamper at close range is going to be able to find the Public Stamper. E Leader's getting pressure back by Zipcaster. 96 is trying to spray some ink, get some kills. But getting taken out by the Rainmaker shot. Final push. Octo brushes are having a good defense in the checkpoint here. Gonna try to find someone else, but they can't. The long range options on the side of Zena are just making that so hard to play into with an Octo brush. And we're through the checkpoint. There we go. A very quick Rainmaker match. Some teams struggle getting through that choke point. I thought the Octobrush might be a good defense for it, but it just wasn't. The ballpoint splatling expertly used by Xena. And sometimes you see a ballpoint splatling not be the best with the special, but I'm starting to think Inkjet needs to be on more weapons with that play. Beautifully used to take advantage of that high ground. And now Xena is looking like a very strong choice to take the stern mat off of the dart fish. Clan Blitz on Brine Water Springs. I'm not predicting we're going to see any weapon change on the side of Xena here. Might see a little bit of a comp change for dart fish. But again, that ball point is just going to be so good for shooting up onto the enemy plat, keeping people pushed back. The stamper can sling ink from underneath the wall. So if you are Dartfish here, it's going to be very hard to set up a Because once you go down, if you get wiped even once and three people can set up camp by the basket, that can be over. Just having one person get those clams, throw them in while three people are just in your spawn, not letting you get out. And here, you can't see this, but I can. We have three people locked in for the side of Xena. That's showing that they, they know what they If it isn't broke, don't fix it. Three people locked in for the side of Dartfish. Their, their whole team's ready. We have to see if they have any comps up their sleeve or if they're just going to play the same comp, but come in with a new strategy. We're just waiting on one more member on the side to lock in. Could be just taking a little bit of a break here. Or could be bringing out a different weapon comp that we haven't seen before. And there we go. It's battle time. And let's see if Xena can take a very strong 3-0, which they need after going 1-1 in the last round. Same comp on the side of Xena. A ZF Charger Forge Pro Neo Splash Octobrush. Forge Pro, we haven't seen that yet in this tournament. Booyah Bomb with the Suction Bomb as a sub weapon. And we'll see how the teams take pressure here. Xena getting one pick on the Forge Pro already. Second brick on the Octobrush. And that's going to be three down, four down, wipeout. That's exactly what you can't do. One player goes down, followed by the whole team. And the crab is in their plat. How do you fight against this? The brush is going to say, I'm going to flank. Crab's going down. Beautiful snipe by the ZF. But there's just not much you can do here. The Octo Brush is going to be picked off by the Stamper. Oh, the Stamper long range shots. Going to find a beautiful kill. Just zipping around the enemy court. And Dartfish here are being shoved back. No power clam yet for the side of Xena with 65 points to go and a 17 penalty, but the ball point has that clam. The ball point's going to get a nice score. And Xena can score. They have plenty of clams, and we're just going to hold this enemy pressure. Brush trying to get a little bit close, sloshing machine, kind of hunt it. 
asking Booyah, but I'm not finding much. I'm trying to separate Xena, but Xena does not care. Another white being found, 23 points to go with only three clams. You're just gonna hold this basket open, get a few more clams, beautiful trade, stamper for Octobrush. Booyah Bomb come, coming out, and that is it. Xena putting the Blitz and Clam Blitz going 3-0 in this round. And I think we might have a bit of a longer break for this one. Before we go on break, we are so far. That is the first match done. Silly Kitties and The Hammer have yet to take a match off of each other. Dark Masters trailing one, zero points behind Mr. Inks one. Choo Choo continued 2-0 against Rito, who we saw last time. And the Star Seekers are 1-0 against Vesper while Wreckfish is enjoined thereby.
Welcome back, everybody. I have managed to kidnap my friend Octo Octochu here. Hello, everyone. Uh, Octochu is going to do a little bit of analysis in between the matches with me. So that way we don't have another one of these long breaks. Thanks We're for going... trusting me with that. It's his first time, so please don't be too mean in the chat. Now. <laughs> Octachu, just to get you up to speed, we have we have 14 teams, sorry, 13 teams in this tournament. And our my prediction is Silly Kitties. Uh, you might have heard of them. Div 4. Uh, so far, they're 1-0 in their third matchup, and they haven't lost yet. Well, that certainly sounds like a force to be reckoned with. If I were playing in this tournament, I would be scared of Silly Kitties. I'm not even in this tournament, and I'm scared of the Silly Kitties myself. Now, I believe our next match is going to be October Rift versus Wreckfish. Uh, so far, October Rift is... They have... They have done a good job. They have three points from the first round and a number of three points from the second round. But their scores are... They played against some tough teams to get to this point. Now, who do you think... Who do you think, out of the two, off the top of your head, who do you think is going to win this one? Um, I'm not quite sure. I would put my money on October Rift, but it looks like it's going to be a pretty even matchup either way. We're just going to have to see the gameplay for ourselves. All right, going into Manta Maria Splat Zones. It looks like we have a C Junior, T Tech, Neo Splash, and an NZAP. Double strikes coming out. Some long range weapons coming in on the side of Wreckfish with the 52 gal Explosher, Wiper, and Tetras. Uh, you play Wiper yourself. How do you, how do you think this Wiper is going to be used here? Wiper can be both very aggressive, but very difficult on Manta Maria. You have to be very careful about how you approach. But it looks like that Wiper is trying to go in for a pick. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's much you can do as a Wiper once two of your teammates go down like we just saw. And now, this is October Rift taking a really aggressive position in the enemy base. Wreckfish is seeming to struggle a lot against that quad shooter comp. Just so much paint on their side. The Tetris and the Wipers just can't keep up with the map control. 52 and Explode have a decent amount of paint. And here we see the, uh, the Tetras are going to find one pick. We're going to go in for a second, but escaping up the wall. And now it is Wreckfish taking control of the points, applying that penalty over to October Rift. And we're, we're not being as aggressive here. We're just trying to play some good angles, uh, catch one or two people out. And the Tetras themselves are going to get caught out. Crowd tank coming out on the side of October Rift, finding a quick follow-up of a Wiper. The T Tech is going to go down, but unfortunately, October Rift is going to take control of the point again and find and that wipeout. And that's a wipeout. I'm a big fan of some of those goofy crab tanks myself, and that was a goofy crab tank situation that we just saw. Yeah, a crab tank. Uh, if any of you saw the recent gem video, crab tank more of an anchor weapon, but at close range, it's still a tank. Very hard to fight. Very hard it's to fight against. Supposed to be reckoned with. Shooter. And October Rift getting another wipeout already. Yeah, Wreckfish is staggering very badly. They need to group themselves back together. Yeah, Rainstorm being used, but we're still a crab tank. Ultra Stamp gonna Just hunt down for that crab. Out. Oh, but they go down. And two players going down on the side of Wreckfish. 
October Rift taking it with 10 points left to go and just holding aggressive positions, not letting uh, Wreckfish take control of a point. Beautiful. The Reef Slider goes up and does not get the zone. First match going to go over to October Rift here. But this might be the closest match of the series so far. How do you think Wreckfish could have pulled that back? They had a really good middle game, but something went wrong there. After that first wipeout, Wreckfish just started going in one by one, spacing themselves further out between each life. They got wiped out again, and by that time, it was just too late. After that first wipeout, uh, and even before, they really just needed to focus on getting more map control uh, behind their bunker and taking things one step at a time. Because even though that timer is getting down past 50%, that's still a lot of time to build up your specials and take back land. Yeah, and talking about those, those specials is a good point. We saw some beautiful special use on the side of the Rift. And I think that's going to be important. Makomart Tower Control is our next match. And I, I suspect we're going to see some more of those tri-strikes, see, see that crab again, especially with more of those open sight lines on Makomart. But do you think that Wiper is going to find any more luck here? I personally don't think so. If they were having difficulty playing around Manta Maria, I think that they might have a lot more trouble playing around... Uh, the walls on Makeum are, especially with that Ultra Stamp, uh, it, it's 100% make or break in my opinion. So do you think that Wreckfish is going to change up for comp here? I suspect four shooters is a fairly adaptable comp. I don't think October is going to be pressured to change up anything. Uh, I'm not sure if Wreckfish will change their comp, but I personally think that they probably should. Double, Double Skirmisher is just not going to cut it against four shooters that are constantly going to outpaint them. And here we go. Let's see if our predictions are right. And yep, it's oh the 52 gal coming out. So a bit of a change up in and the they October. Are even less paint this time. Yeah, switching I'm out that expo pressure. for a 52. But you need you need that range. Maybe one of your skirmishers should switch over to something with a bit more range. And now Starlight Interesting finding Wiper teaming up on that T tech. Yeah, a lot of speed coming out on the side of Wreckfish. And October Rift are just going to find two quick picks to equalize, and now they're on the tower. Oh, and it's very even right now. Lots of fights happening, very spread out. October Rift has mid control, but they're not going to push just yet. Yeah, October Rift is just going to try to get that flank. And you want to keep those flanks painted up, especially against two skirmishers. Wipers going down, three people going on down on the side of Wreckfish, and now this might be October's Rift time to push up. Crab Tank being used, Wave Breaker being used, a lot of specials coming out to hopefully get this first checkpoint. And that Wiper gets triple teamed. You hate to see it. Uh, not if you're an October Rift fan. <laughs> I think they're <laughs> quite enjoying this show of domination. Here we go, quickly oh, pushing. Wreckfish trying to push in. Reef Slider going out, shreds that crab. And it's just the CG in your left. No special for CG in your oh, quick and pick up. It's a wipeout. They need to take mid control and fast, else they might not have the momentum to keep up. Yeah, I don't like to see someone on the tower quickly get on, get off, so it charges up your special. But you need to be joining your team and exerting pressure so you can hold that control and then go back to the tower once it's in the middle. Uh, the Tetris are going to go down on the side of Wreckfish here, and whoa, those tri strikes! A lot of specials coming out. But the checkpoint is going to get cleared. 52 is being picked off. Wiper is being picked off. That tech, no, that T tech is a menace. You might want to pay attention to them because they are ripping through the enemy team. October Rift isn't playing right next to each other, but they're playing close enough that it's never just a one v one. And both Tetris going down again, Wiper isolated behind on the enemy stack, trying to find an angle to take out the Tower Rider. Slashing Machine trying to get a bit closer. And there oh, you go. We're gonna get... oh. oh, they got a pick, surprisingly. Slashing Machine is very dangerous. Two Drex and they're not quite a wipeout. But that takes away a lot of specials from the side of October Rift. 
But this T Tech isolated finds the 1v2 and wins it. Runs away from a Recider, gets the, the three. They've got the paint, they've got the power, and they've got the tri strikes. What else do they need? Yeah, and it's just the mechanical skill on the side of that T Tech, just helping glide through this competition. Holding on to those tri strikes. Wonder what they're waiting for. Wreckfish is fighting dearly for their lives. The machine looks. They're getting double teamed on that right platform. Booyah Bomb goes out, pushes the crab to the side, but it's still up and able to push some pressure. This yeah, is just a chaotic fight. It's a chaotic fight, but I think that's what October Rose is specializing in. That T Tech by themselves for most of that last fight was able to find more impact than the rest of Wreckfish. And if you have one player who's able to 1v4 like that, it's kind of already decided. Equal yeah, trade no streaming in right a team now. game. Yeah, someone needs to tell this D-Tech it's a team game because they do not need their team so far. And there we go, just going in, finding another quick pick. With 52 going down on the side of Rec on the side of October. We have bomb going out, but it gets painted under. You need to help your teammates, especially when they're right next to you like that. Yeah, kind of isolated tri strikes going out there, not finding the most impact. But I don't suspect the T Tech's going to take long to charge those up again with how they're playing. Especially sitting on that tower with that passive special advantage, they're going to have their tri strikes soon. Oh, oh I know super jumper. jumps are allowed. There we go, the wipers down. Can they find anything else? Yes, both scrimmatures going down, a quick response going to help them, but the tri strikes are up. Finding a good angle to throw them at, throwing the bomb at their feet, wipers going down. You can't hunt down this T Tech because you will be the prey instead. Just holding on to those tri strikes, I suspect they're just going to try to throw them onto the we tower. Here. Going up, pushing that crab to the side, can't quite get it, and they are down. Oh, but October Rift takes a trade too. Oh, both of their but, skirmishers went down in that fight. But it doesn't matter. We just a little bit of a lockout happening right at the very end. So even if that fight went well, the Wreckfish needed a lot of time to push. And I don't suspect October Rift were going to be gentle with them once they did. Certainly not. That that 10 attack was just not letting Wreckfish take any space whatsoever. Every time one of those skirmishers popped onto their screen, it was a kill order. Exactly, and skirmishers sometimes are supposed to be a bit of a distraction, but I don't think they're supposed to be dying that much. Uh, Definitely not. I'm certainly guilty of feeding a lot in my time, but... Wreckfish needs to tone it back just a little group up, fight with each other. That's what skirmishers specialize in. Now, if you were the captain of Wreckfish, what are your what what's your game plan going into Undertale Rainmaker? Well, I think that the Splatana Wiper is gonna find a lot more success on Undertale Rainmaker. Um simply because of the layout of this map. Uh, I'm not quite sure what other backlines they can pull out, but I would certainly want two shooters on that team. They just don't have enough paint to keep up control. They had the power and they showed it off multiple times that match against October Rift, but they just could not keep mid control. Once it was lost, it was gone for good. Yeah, I suspect October Rift, their, their captain's orders are just going to be T Tech go and get some kills you don't need to play a skirmisher weapon when you have that level of movement and that level of aim if i was on october rift right now i would certainly be rejoicing being carried by that t-tech and not to downplay anyone else on the team because everyone around everyone on that team was playing together very well but that t-tech is proving themselves to be a force to be reckoned with Oh yeah, it's definitely, I should be taking notes here, because that is some gameplay that I wish I had. Now, going into match three here. And for those of you who are just joining us, it's a play all three series. Oh, a bit of a change up we coming in. We see a Splatana Stamper. 
on both sides, Splatana Stamper. Certainly a good weapon on this map. I would have stuck with the Wiper personally. Yeah, I know you're a bit of a Wiper fan, but personally, I think that Zip Capture is going to find a lot more impact. Oh, and this pop could really go either way. Both teams fighting really hard, but it looks like it goes to October Rift. Yeah, I think that Wreck, uh, Wreckfish here are just trying to play a little bit more carefully, which is good. And we're finding the first blade here. The 52 gal is going to go down. Oh, and that's three going down on the side of October Rift. Redfish and... grabs the Rainmaker. Looks like they want to push down the right path. Whoa, oh. but they charge in too fast. Yeah, they're just trying to take advantage of that respawn timer. Now it's a wipeout on the side of Wreckfish. This is not what you want to see. They had a beautiful early game. But can they hold out during the mid game? Left side being painted up quickly here. Rainmaker, all they have to do is swim. They have an escort. They have a vanguard. And it looks like they're going to have a lead and no checkpoint. Oh, but they don't get the sink. And, and they get wiped out. Wreckfish might be able to take it back. Looks like they want to take it down the right path. Shorter, but far more risky. October Rift is already coming back. Yeah, that 52 gal is just going to be posted up onto the high ground. Two shots from Vati, you're out of here. So those tri strikes not finding much impact on the side of Wreckfish. And now it's just giving October Rift time to get some kills, time to get for specials. Booyah Bomb is up, but why would you use a Booyah here? You have... Oh, Booyah, not that Rainmaker, it's surrounded. Just barely not going to be able to get that sink. October Rift going to grab the Rainmaker. Looks like they're going to push down this left path again. Take it the way that it's much more timely to get to. And plus, they don't care about but Oh! Was that from the Fizzy Bomb? Very awkward angle to lose Looks that like Rainmaker it. at. Awkward but... angle, awkward positioning. Very um, difficult to paint for yourself in that situation. Crab Tank coming out. Zipcaster going in, gonna pressure that Crab Tank, but it does not look like they're gonna get anything out of it. There is a trade. Yeah, and realistically here, October Rift is in the driver's seat by exactly one point. Oh, unfortunate. The barrier goes up just as that bomb is thrown. A quick uh, questionable super jump, but it seems to be working out. But the pop is coming out. You have to get out of there. And right now, October Rift in the lead by one point exactly. They are they contesting don't... a pop. They get it. Taking it down this right path. They want to sink this checkpoint, and they're going to get it. That's when you go for right checkpoint. Unfortunately, the response not coming in in time. Just the Stamper left. But if the Stamper can find the Rainmaker, that's going to be an important stall. Just falling back, the Stamper is waiting for those respawns left side. But what a slice! Amazing that... pick from the side of October Rift. Wreckfish had the power to take back that mid control. They took it just a little too fast, and now they're going to get wiped out because of it. Beautiful wipeout coming out. Enzap is picking up the Rainmaker here. Interesting choice. I was thinking maybe more of a Stamper. But with no checkpoints needing to be cleared, you can play a lot quicker. And Zap a little bit scared of that Fizzy Bomb after what happened to the last push. Here's and what we're looking for. October Rift is... Oh, the Rainmaker charge is too far. They had it going perfectly. Follow the rest of your team in the charge. Make sure that someone's covering your flank, but don't go in first. Yeah, this is a bat, bit of a back and forth slugfest here. Oh, and this one and the two. Kill. I wonder. Oh, Splat Bomb is how they died there. Splat Bomb dropped on their jump. Very smart decision. Quick thinking for sure. Yeah, that's the risk of charging up a slash like that. Everyone's going to know where you are, so you can very easily be taken out by the Splat Bomb there. The most the Stamper could do in that situation was charge dash away, but it's not going to do anything. Yeah, now three people going down on the side of Wreckfish. October, October Rift is, is pushing yeah. this, getting around the splash while nearly sinking it. Yeah, 23 seconds here with seven points on the clock. This is looking like it's very much going to be a 3-0 for October Rift, but it's not over until it's over. Rainmaker going down, 10 seconds on the clock, specials being used. Booyah Bomb, still an option. 
but just gotta be thrown defensively. Oh, yeah. Three people are going down on the side of Wreckfish, and October and they just risks can't get it. that pop in time. And there we go. 3 0 for October Rift. They now have a total of six points. Solid 3 0 from October Rift. Not very difficult to say if I would have done anything different as them. They certainly made some mistakes, got wiped out a few times, but I think that Wreckfish just did not capitalize on the power that they had. Yeah, I, I think don't go back to the drawing board as October Rift, but maybe have a talk with your team. Um, there, there's definitely one or two mistakes that might be punished off by some of our higher level teams, but I think that they did a very good job just regrouping after those little mistakes and hopefully they will progress further into this tournament for sure i would love to see october rift keep destroying and keep clearing out those mistakes they can be a very solid team if, if they get rid of if they f clean up their act just a little bit sorry i stuttered a bit that's all right <laughs> And while we were casting that match, here's how everything broke down for the other games. Undertow Dartfish, who we watched last match, had a bye. Xena Buckles went 3 0 against Reto Toko. Silly Kitties 3 0, no surprise, against Dark Masters. Choo Choo continued 3 0 against Sassy Spikers, and Star Seekers 2 1 against 101.5 The Hammer FM. And Mystery Inc. 3 0 against Vesper. Our current standings are Choo Choo Continued and Silly Kitties, untouchable at 9 points each. Xena Buckles at 7, and then Sassy Spikers, Star Sneakers, and October Rift at 6. Sure sounds like Silly Kitties is going to continue to be a force to be reckoned with the rest of this tournament. And I'm very excited to see what they have to offer if they continue to push forward. Yeah, and Silly Kitties versus Choo Choo Continued is our round four match that I want to be able to spectate. Our two undefeated teams playing up against each other, that's going to be a bloodbath, and I'm not sure who's going to come out looking worse for wear. Certainly sounds like a match.
Welcome back, everybody. Currently, our next matchup is going to be... Hold on, I had it down here somewhere. It is on the screen. Dark Masters versus 101.5, the Hammer FM. I know I was very excited to see Silly Kitties versus Choo Choo, but I suspect that might be our Grand Finals match. Octo, how do you think this is going to go? Uh, for this round, I'm not sure because I'm not familiar with either of these teams, so it really could go either way for me. Yeah, I suspect this is going to be close. Dark Masters are currently in 7th with 4 points, and 101.5, the Hammer, is currently in 10th with 3 points. So both teams are very close. It looks like they had fairly equal results throughout this tournament. And we'll see if any of them can get that last breath of air they need to make it into the upper bracket. Well, and the statistics would say that Dark Masters should come out on top, but I wouldn't put it past 101.5 the Hammer FM to take a victory here. Never underestimate the underdog. Now looking at this map pool, Hagelfish Market, Clam Blitz is our first match. How do you think this is going to go? This could easily be a very chaotic match, and it looks like we're getting right into it right now. A Forge Pro T-Tech Slashing Machine 52 coming up from the side of Dark Masters, and the Hammer has three different flavors of T-Tech. Blaster! Damn I'm fast very call. excited to see that Blaster. They're either going to get a lot of kills, or they're going to feed their butt off. Yeah, Blaster, especially against this sort of comp, it can be a hit or a miss weapon. And the first T-Tech is going down on the side. Sorry, the shot's going down. Forge is going down 1-1 one, one trade so far. And oh, a double play. T-Tech pushes far too up. Yeah, and it looks like the hammer is the nail right now as they're going to go down 3. Just letting Dark Masters take some paint control. And that was just a special bloodbath. Dark Masters is going to maintain that mid control, but basically everyone in the game has gone down at this point. Yeah, Blaster exerting a ton of pressure, but going down, Slosh Machine going down on the side of Dark Masters. And there's just a kind of struggle to get that pick. Yeah, going to try to get through that Booyah Bomb, but unfortunately they can't. And here we see a Trizuka not finding much impact. And two players on the side of, of Hammer going down. And that Dark Masters are just trying to hold mid. That Blaster got completely pinched. Dark Masters is keeping their pressure. They just need to get the power to make a push. Yeah, and I think they find it here. If they can hold this court, push onto ramp here. That's all they need but the Hammer say no. This is back and forth for almost three minutes into this game, and no one has made any progress. Yeah, I don't think we've even seen a power clam in this game yet. We had four clams in that tech, but they go down to the gal. Are are they aware that there's an objective, or are they just saying whoever gets the most kills wins this one, guys? It looks like we might be playing team death team deathmatch today. <laughs> Very excited to see if any of these specials can find a combination. We still have special on the Blaster and a T-Tech here. Tri-Strikes can come out. One, two, three. Fortune Finding the nothing. Came up on that Blaster. Yeah, and it's a 2v1 in mid. Two alive on the side of Dark Master. They can finally keep taking some space if they keep pushing forward, but it looks like they don't want to quite yet. They have a Power Clam, though. That's the first of the match. We have Bomb going out. Continuing to take space. Oh, but the machine cannot push through it. Yeah, and we even have a flank from the 52 gal who's hoping. Can they get this power in time? They can, but they go down. But for some there's Very tons of clan there. If a Dark Masters can push through, pick up that power, but unfortunately they can't. Yeah, that machine yeah. rushed in just a little too fast. Again, you've got to be playing with your team. Paint under their feet if they need it. Yeah, maybe they're inspired by uh, the T-Tech from the last match we watched, but you can't be going by yourself. 
So quickly proven wrong by the 52. Gal finding the billion flank there. Nice shutdown on those tri strikes. Only getting two out. Another pick. This time it's the blaster. And Dark we Masters. We see a power play on We don't. Oh, we do. We do. Right on we that do. team. We are coming out getting two picks. Tri strikes coming out. This is it. We finally have push going. Can Dark Masters continue to score points? They've. Oh, they're sinking a lot of flames. They've got control of that plat, but they're backing out. Yeah, they have no more clams right now. Got it down to 62 points, 19 point penalty here, but that's all they needed. With how this match has been going on, it took almost four minutes to get to this point. But so, the hammer's I've... continuing to push them out. We might be able to see a push from them. Oh, panic tri strike is not what you want to see. Power clamp being made by the side of Dark Masters. Hammer still has that pity. So this could go either way right now. One good wipe, it's called Disaster, for the lead of Dark Masters. Very true, but they are not letting up their control in mid. Ooh, that forge going down, very surprising. And a nice tri-strike shot finding the Sasha machine just tri-strikes left to rest on. But once again, three players of Hammer going down in a critical moment, 20 seconds left. Everybody knows, you go down with 30 seconds left on the clock, you might not have a push. But they're getting picks on Dark Masters. Oh, but two are down again. They're not going to have the time to make a power clam anymore. It looks like this game is just over. And unfortunately, they must have picked up the pity earlier on the match. And that's game. Clam Blitz is either very fast or it's very slow like this. Yep, we had an extremely slow match, and it was just a five-minute beating from Dark Masters that we saw. Yeah, I don't think we can even call that a beating. That was definitely a slugfest from those two teams. It could have gone either way, and I think we're in for a very exciting series. Museum? Certainly. Museum Zone's coming up next. If you're the hammer, what are you doing? Because so far it's equal, but I think a comp change might be able to help them take the lead. Well, the blaster from the side of hammer could find more success under the ledges of museum, but neither side was really running a backline to pressure, so it could go either way. They just need to keep up. They need to keep up their mid control a lot stronger than they did that last game because both teams had the potential to keep that mid control. Biggest thing is the hammer has got to stop doing those panic try strikes because all it does is make you more vulnerable. Yeah, Dark Masters right now, I think their comp is solid. I'm not expecting to see a lot of changes, but let's just see some, let's just see a bit more coordination. They staggered, they staggered a touch. And I think if they just get rid of that little bit of a stagger, then they're going to be able to take this match solidly. Yep, get rid of the stagger. And I've said it at least three times now. Just play around your teammates and you're going to be golden. Yeah, it's for anyone who's ever played a Fire Emblem game, Death Meatball. Keep everyone together. Just roll through the enemy team. Especially on something like Splat Zones, where no one can sneakily get behind you with a power clam and score. They have, you know where the enemies want to fight, so if you're all together, you can take it to them first. Museum and does have a lot of different approach routes, though. We might be seeing people sneaking behind the enemy team this match. We could. I wonder if there'll be a couple fast weapons to take advantage of those flank routes. And now we're just about ready to go. This might be the closest match we've seen so far, and here we are. Starting our next game, Splat Zones on Museum Dalfonsino. Hydra Splatling coming out on the side of Dark Masters. And, and no backline from the side of the hammer. But for have a sloshy machine instead of a blaster, taking better advantage of those ledges, in my opinion. Triple shooters with a sloshing machine, it can be quite deadly. 
Those fizzy bombs are also going to be able to put a lot of pressure on that Hydra Spotling, but we're going to need to see them actually use them. Two people going down already on the side of Hammer, and this Hydra Splatling is not afraid to get in your face. Point being taken first off by Dark Masters. Tri-Strike's coming out to contest, but unfortunately no flank being found on the Hydra. So you have to take it to a 3v4. The Hammer is continuing to scatter. They do get a pick on that T-Tech, but they're not moving back together quite fast enough. The Gal goes down. And that shot gets a kill. They're going to pull out the, the Trizuka and it does not quite get value. Yeah, questionable play, point off the Trizuka there. Maybe trying to find a lucky shot over the spinner. Okay, here we go. Quick equalization on the side. Oh, unfortunate capture. Can they equalize? Yes. The hammer takes the lead here, but for T-Tech's going down, 3v4 on the defense. Finding a quick pick on the enemy T-Tech slash machine going down. 50 points left on the clock. A trade over and Dark Masters get it, giving a 36 penalty over to the side of Hammer. Yeah, it looks but like we just saw a double Booyah Bomb from the Hydra and the uh, Sloshing Machine there, but we panned away. Uh, yeah. Very dangerous, because while the double Booyah Bomb is quite effective, it's not going to give you any special charge. You have to work to get that, but very nicely taken over by the side of Dark Masters here. And they're just going to be holding this mid control while the hammer is taking that time to push back. We've got two people dropping on the right. That gal is surrounded by three people, but... Oh, three on the side of the hammer go down. And this In... T-Tech is now alone, able to take the zone. I don't think we needed to see Tri-Strike, sir. You were all alone. The Splat Bomb and your gun can take that zone and take quicker than you can with three Tri-Strikes. But still, very nice capture. Two people going down on the side of Dark Masters right now. Very hard to counterattack, but the gal is fearless going in, trying to find any picks possible. We see the killer whale fuck one session. go out, but the gal just cannot survive even escaping into the enemy plat. This Hydra Spotling is in a very awkward position. They have to booyah to keep themselves alive. Let's see. A defensive booyah coming out. Slosher Machine, two directs onto that Hydra. Two people are down on the side of Dark Masters, and now the Hammer is quickly closing that lead. We see a Trizuka come out on the side of the Hammer. It's not quite going to get any picks. Another Booyah Bomb flying at mid, but it's not going to take the zone. Three. Oh, two points left, and a penalty is applied on the side of the Hammer. Dark Masters. That was when they needed to take the point back, and they did for Snowy. 52 gal on the slashing machine all alone on the enemy plat. Slashing machine is going to go down, but just a slow defense being played. Dark Masters, they, oh, they can't afford a retake here, and they don't let it happen. I thought they were in danger, but getting three quick picks, it doesn't matter what specials you use, if only one person is left, it's very hard to play into the enemy team. Booyah Bomb being charged. <clears throat> Beautiful defensive Booyah Bomb, forcing out a Trizuka, trying to find some attacks, but nothing yet. Slash Machine's going down, but three points remaining for the side of Dark Masters. If they're able to cap the zone here, this could spell disaster for the Hammer. We're seeing a very intense fight for this zone, and it looks like the Hammer might be able to take it. They don't quite have the paint to take it fully. There we go, it's just the a machine, machine versus a And the machine comes out triumphant. We don't need to see the Booyah Bomb quite yet. Booyah Bomb prevents them from... Finally, they're able to apply that penalty, but it makes you wonder why use the Booyah Bomb there. You could have painted just a bit quicker with your primary weapon. Or even a Fizzy Bomb. Exactly. 52 gal fight winning against the T-Tech. Two people down with nine seconds to go, and this is not what you want to see if you're the hammer. They need to take the point right now, or it's disaster. Three people it, going down spells the end of the game for them. Dark Masters just kept up the pressure that game. The hammer continued to 
scatter, and their sloshing machine just needed to use more of those fizzy bombs. They were not putting out the kind of paint that they could be putting out. Yeah, that's twice in that game. We saw an isolated player on the point choose to use their special weapon instead of their primary. Now, Octo, uh, you, you've been in the comp scene for a while. Can you explain how much impact that actually has when you use your special there? Well, Snowy, I would say that it has absolutely zero impact on the game. In fact, it would only hinder your own team because you're wasting your own special on nothing. Yeah, Buyo Bomb, for example, that's a displacement special. Uh, for some of you new viewers who haven't been in the comp scene as long, uh, Buyo Bomb, great displacement. You throw it where the enemy's set up, especially if they have that Hydra Splatling. Force them to move away to help your team take that area. So using it just to paint the point alone like that doesn't really get as much impact as it would later on with your whole team being able to play off it. We did see the double Booyah Bomb to retake that zone from the side of Dark Masters, but that was a little bit of an exception because they already have the power to outpaint the hammer, especially because the hammer just is not outputting the kind of paint that they need to be. Yeah, I think it really depends. Like, if you're just respawning and your team's down, then maybe we can see a Booyah Bomb throw it onto a point just to take it. But if you're right on top of a point, I think it's a bit of a questionable play. Especially when the only person alive on the enemy team is in their spawn. It's very possible that it's a communication issue on the parts of these teams, because we've seen some panic plays from both teams when it's a 1v1. Yeah, and now I wonder if that will carry over into Inkblot Art Academy Tower Control. One of my favorite modes for Inkblot Academy. I know we played each other here quite a bit. What strategies do you expect to see coming out? Uh, very possible that we see that blaster come back out, but I think each team is going to have some Booyah Bomb of their own, very likely a sloshing machine from each side. And let's see. Oh, We've got nice. four GG specials on the side of Dark Masters. Two Tri Strikes and two Booyah Bombs. Yeah. <laughs> if a timer hit if a, a timer hits ten and you don't have a lead from on Team Hammer, it's very much quite literally over. And there we go. First by going over onto the side of Dark Masters, following it up with the second kill. This is not what you want to see! This they're getting quick picks and they're going to be pushing into the plat of the hammer. Yeah, double T-Tech. Quite deadly. Once you, they play together or they can play alone like this, and they're just able to dominate so much of a map. Hydra's Platling going down. Finally some long range options on the side of the hammer. But I don't think that's going to help them all too much. Two sets of tri strikes went out, but they didn't quite find value. The sloshing machine, if anything, got more value than those tri strikes. Yeah, sloshing machine was just left to mind his own business, get some good kills, and again, just the, just the area of effect it has, being able to shoot over the walls in the, in the academy, is huge. This weapon needs to be stopped. But doesn't look like it's gonna be because that T Tech was far too tunnel visioned on the tower. Yeah, plus the mechanics of that sloshing machine, playing it as a skirmisher. He knows when to run away, when not to take those fights. Just having a T-Tech on the tower, T-Tech versus T-Tech showdown. A hammer finding one, but can the hammer find the rest? And unfortunately no, getting closer and closer to the third and final checkpoint. Ball point going down, there's your range. People jumping in. Hydra on the tower, that's where you want to see them with that low mobility. Oh, and, and they go is... down just as they get their Booyah Bomb. The Dark Masters might be able to keep pushing all the way to the end. It's going to be close. I don't think this is going to be close. Two points. Tri Strikes coming in. And we oh, have they get two sneak. picks with that Trish and the Wipeout. That is game, folks. That was such a beautiful flank. I was a bit worried the T-Tech uh, the -tech wouldn't get there in time, but fortunately, they did. The hammer just scattered far too much that game. 
very likely that they lost that second game and their head just might not have been in it anymore. Yeah, I think that was the best match we have seen from Dark Masters this entire set. If they play with that energy moving on to the bracket stage, I expect they're going to show a lot of teams that they mean business. Yep, like I mentioned before, numbers don't mean everything. Unfortunately, this time the underdogs didn't win, but Dark Masters could prove to be the underdogs in the future. Exactly, they don't have the strongest position going on in, into the bracket stage, but if they keep on improving like this and playing as as good as we just saw on the Inkblot Academy, then I expect them to, to beat some of those better teams. And I'd certainly love to see that happen. All right, Octo, why don't we quickly grab some popcorn so that we can sit back, relax, and watch the rest of this tournament once the bracket stage continues. I'm certainly ready to watch another set of Carnage like that one.
Welcome back from the break, everybody. We are going into the top bracket. We're going to watch Silly Kitties versus Xena buckles our shoe. Uh, we've seen Xena play already, but we haven't seen anything from Silly Kitties. And I expect this match is going to be a bloodbath. Yep, a couple rounds ago, we did, uh, in another match, Silly Kitties did fight Choo Choo Continued, and they were two of the top contenders, but Silly Kitties did lose to them. Uh, but they are still rather even with Cena Buckles or Shu. This set could go either way, and I personally would like to see Silly Kitties win this set. Yeah, I know Red Cap is a player on his signature Splash-O-Matic as well. Carbon Deco, Neo Splash, Splash, and a Ballpoint versus Ballpoint, Double Splash, and a Stamper. How do you think this is going to play out, Octo? Um, it really may go either way. Sturgeon Shipyard Tower Control can be a tricky one, but the Double Crab might end up helping Xena Buckles our shoe in the long run. Yeah, two crabs coming out from Xena, but one of them getting shut down right away. Carbon Deco. But that ball point is just going to be able to apply a lot of pressure standing on top of his perch. And Xena Buckles our shoe is beginning to push the tower. Those tri strikes do end up stopping push early on. But three so people going down on the side of. Xena getting back on the tower, they might be able to make it to the checkpoint before any more resistance can show up for the Silly Kitties. The Carbon Roller is hiding in Fight Club right now. They're jumping out. Would have liked to see them do something funky with that position. But yeah, Xena Buckles our shoe is going to be applying a lot of pressure. That Trizuka does not stop the Crab Tank, and they are going to keep the pressure on. Yeah, it almost feels like the Carbon Deco was taken... Specifically to counter the double crab, but the double crabs are doing such a good job of positioning, so they're not being taken out. And now yep, that one crab being positioned near Spinner ended up just pushing Silly Kitty's crab out back behind the wall of their snipe. Yeah, and two people going down, a quick trade back on the And it's still a 3v2. Oh, only one person left. Just that one crab tank. Pressure's gonna be applied, trying to support the jump of Aerostat with the uh... With the ballpoint here, and the crowd tank's not going to find much impact besides a quick zoning tool. No specials on the side of Silly Kitties, though. They need to kind of farm those up if they want to take back mid control here. Xena has been continuing to hold up the pressure for the rest of their team to get here. Now we're down to a 3v2, folks. Yeah, two crowd tanks left, and there's a ballpoint. Uh, ballpoint has special. Inkja is another one of those specials which is really good against the crowd tanks. But just using it quickly to maybe get some chip damage, stone some people out. Two people going down. There we go. It's 3v3. Uh, Incha and a Crab Tank on the side of Xena. Both are being used right now, and the, tri the Trizuka is ready. And Xena's just going to continue to push that tower, not letting Silly Kitties get a single go at it. Yeah, it's quite scary. Good try strike use zoning out one of the zoning out one of the splashes. But Xena right now getting wiped out, but they made it all the way to the second checkpoint. Silly Kitties, Kitties are has moving a... forward to take that mid control. But is it gonna be enough? Can they get a good push against Xena right now? Yeah, because unfortunately by the time they're ready to for themselves. The Xena squad is ready, and they're all respawn. Tri Strike's coming out to hopefully gain some pressure. This checkpoint's going to be pretty much secured on the side of Silly Kitties. Oh, but we're Inch seeing a flank. Are they going to get something out of it? No, Red Cap's going to go down, unfortunately. Uh, the ball point goes down as well. So not equalizing. Very close, 36 to 43, but unfortunately Xena is just able to exert a lot of pressure and hold three specials. For her next push down. Queen going one for one, getting that ball point out. Crab tank going down before crab tank can be popped. Just the zip caster left on the hands of that stamper. Octo, do you think Silly Kitties can make a comeback here? I think it's certainly possible. They almost did once before. This inkjet is coming out 
Is it gonna find any picks? Doesn't look like it. Can they get the person off snipe? Not quite. Yeah, it's gonna be much harder without a special that has as much kill power as Inkjet right now. Yeah, Crab Tank being used just a zip caster on the hands of Ad Stamper ball and the uh, Xeno's ball point now has their inkjet ready to go. So Crab Tank will be in danger, but three specials. Tri Strike's coming out. Good special layering. One of those or one of those flashes is going down. Still have the inkjet on the side of the silly kitties. They use it, not checking the corner, and the splash is able to take them out. Oh, and we just saw another the Neo Splash run off the map with 20 seconds left. That Zipcaster really put a lot of pressure on them, and the follow-up from their teammate just... That Neo Splash couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, unfortunately, not a lot of specials to push with, and the ballpoint going down is not good here. Neo Splash needs to get on tower. Why aren't they getting on tower? Fortunately, and they've got to push in a moment of desperation. Yeah, they have one Splash in their mid. Going back on to Snipe, Tri Strike's coming out. And the ball point's going down, that's huge! And they just and got the Kitties lead! actually takes the lead, stealing the game. I didn't think they could pull it off, but they fortunately were able to get that ball point right from window. The ball point was doing a lot of work in holding them off. Very true, and Xena did get staggered just a little too much at the end. He didn't have the pressure of their whole team to stop that tower, let alone specials. Yeah, really, you need your team. If you don't have specials, you need your team. And we saw we saw Silly Kitties on one of our pushes. They had their whole team have specials at a time. So they're able to push through. That's a good base. They've got the power, they know how to coordinate it. The execution just wasn't quite there the entire match, but they got it when it counted. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter how the first five minutes of a match go, if you can win in overtime, perfectly alright. Now, Octo, given what just happened, how do you think Phantom Maria Rainmaker is gonna go? I think that the double Double Crab Tank is just not going to work on this map. There are not nearly enough good spots for Crab Tank to be effective on Manta Maria. There are some good ones, but they're just far too awkward to really make any effective pushes with. So I think we're going to be seeing some completely different weapon comps. And until we see them, a little hard to say which team is going to win. I think that my money is on Xena this game, though. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have to go, silly kitties. I think they can pull it off once again. Here we go. Same comp for silly kitties, and same comp for Xena. Actually, this is surprising. The specials are gonna be rather difficult to get pressure with, but they must know exactly what they're doing if they're confident to keep it going. Yeah, actually, there is a change up. That's a T. So, a slightly higher kill pressure with that primary weapon. And just a little less paint. Yeah, but I don't think paint is like issue. they don't quite need it. Crab Tank going out from the side of Xena. Is it quite going to get anything? Not particularly yet, but they are getting a push going. Yeah, Xena breaking the checkpoint first, taking the lead here. Crab Tank comes side of. Uh, and the uh, Zipcaster face checks the Crab Tank, not what you want to see. Yeah, that's quite unfortunate. Ballpoint taking a forward position here, trying to paint up mid a touch, taking out the enemy of Ballpoint. Two people going down on the side of Xena. Oh, I thought he was going to fall. Thought he was gonna fall. Yeah, a red, red cap scaring us a little bit there. They know where that Stamper is. Stamper's not going to be able to find a Shark and Angle there. And red cap is just popping that Crab Tank, trying to pressure out that Stamper just a bit more. Tri Strikes I... coming out and Silly Kitties. Oh, can they get onto the totem? Not quite. Their team did not paint the pedestal itself. Very, very dangerous right now. All they need to do is win one play and the Silly Kitties can at least break through that checkpoint. But Xena, brilliantly under pressure, taking down two people, three people. 
on the side of the silly kitties. Respawn's gonna and come in get one by one. Too. The Stampler is looking to push them further back. Gonna back up just a little bit, keep themselves alive, not overextend. Yeah, and the ball point's gonna pick up that Rainmaker, keeping your back line on that kind of like ranged weapon. Now the Inkjet, brilliant shot coming in. And now Shot that... straight through that squid roll parry. Exactly. And oh, the tri strike taking up a crab tank. But three people going down on the side of Silly Kitties. Just the ball point left, trying to mount the defense against the zip caster. And oh, there we and go, they take that to Rainmaker. Xena charging in with the Rainmaker just a little too fast. And we've got okay. another chaotic fight right here. Crab yeah, Tank coming out from the side of Silly Kitties, and they're going to be taking the pressure. They've got mid control, and it looks like they are ready for a push. Yeah, they're just going to go left side, just have to paint up a path. But they're not looking out for the left flank, and the Rainmaker is going to be shut down. Almost a wipeout, just Red Cap isolated by himself in the enemy base, surviving oh, bears to wipe out. And they are not able to jump out. That stagger could be very fatal for them. Yeah, that stagger is not going to do them any favors. And now the kind of pressure people back. Erhasto just running it down, getting up to 13 points. Very good push from the side of Xena, but they are getting wiped out now. Can Silly Kitties take this back? They've got two minutes to work with. That's more than enough time to change the entire course of the game. Yeah, but I don't know what was happening with Ali there. We're going to be able to take the checkpoint. But that definitely took a bit more time than they were hoping. One of those, uh, one of those splashes going down. Two people going down on the side of Silly Kitties. But they get the Rainmaker and were able to take it down to 33 points. 21 points away from taking the lead here. That but carbon China... roller was alone. They should have just retreated with a super jump. Don't stay there. Yeah, and just holding specials. Two crabs ready to go. One being. With that crab being shredded almost instantly, no specials on the side of Silly Kitties though. They have their primary weapons and they're quite adept at using them. Queen trying to look for one, finding the stamper, trading out one of the splashes. Three people popping the bird, 50 seconds left to go, two people going down from the side of Silly Kitties. Respawns coming in, Tri strikes being used, trying to pressure away anyone on the side of Xena from picking up that Rainmaker. And now the stamper is trying to take down the Inkjet. The Inkjet is finding one kill, and sees somebody on the checkpoint of the Rainmaker. They're not quite going to get that person yet. They could be ready for a disastrous flank. This Tenetech has been holding mid control like mad, and we're going to see them pick up the Rainmaker and get ready for this next push. Yeah, Crab Tank is ready on the side of Silly Kitties. We're going to see a pop now. Still have that Trizuka to counter the enemy's Crab Tank. Nine seconds left. Kill here would be fatal. Rainmaker dot on ducking and weaving around the Inkjet. But the Zipcaster is going to try to take them out in overtime, and it does happen! Xena time the just series. Too much for that Rainmaker to dodge. It's like they were playing Toho. Exactly. That was quite literally bullet hell. And if you miss once, you don't start over, but you do surrender a point when you want to take that lead. Very nice game from the side of Xena. Exactly. Now I don't. I like the, I like their comp. Xena. They made that comp shine for them on Manta Maria. I know you were underestimating the double crab, but I think they're playing it quite well. And I think it's going to be even better in Macomart clams. A bit longer sight lines can post up on stack. But Octo, do you want to walk us through, kind of? A potential comp change, just so Xena can show a little bit more dominance in this series. I don't think they need one for Macomart Clam Blitz, personally. I think that the Double Crab is going to just be far more effective on Macomart. Double Splash has more than enough paint for each of them to pair up with a friend and just go ham.
I would like to see more success from the Carbon Roller on the side of Silly Kitties. Uh, that Trizuka is a very powerful tool, and it can cancel out those Crab Tanks a lot, so if Xena doesn't respect it, and Silly Kitties is able to get that Carbon Roller the power that it needs, we could be seeing another game on the side of Silly Kitties. Exactly. And even though the Carbon Roller has a lot of crucial picks with the primary weapon, you just say it does have quite a threatening special. And we're seeing it brought out again by Queen. Let's see if it can do a bit more work this time against those crabs. Nina's pulling out the same comp. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. Exactly, and plenty of moves. A stamp. The carbon deco is going to be so huge here. Past weapon eight clams. And now we're just seeing Red popping that crab tank. Not sure what he was aiming Not a bit quite low. Sure what they're aiming at, because there are no enemies there. We have a splash tool going up at the top. Splash on the side of Silicates is gonna win it. Carbon Roller looking for another pick. They get it. Two are down on the side of Xena, and they're ideally gonna keep looking for pressure. Oh, but the carbon goes down. Yeah, that was a brilliant bomb from there. They have a power clam ready, so, so Silly Kitties can score at any time once they take pressure. Meaning Xena's kind of on the back foot. Only three clams between them. Ain't Jet being pop. That's a lot of kill pressure, and if nothing comes from it, it's going to be kind of detrimental to this defense, but Xena pushing in deep. Zipcaster being used, going back and forth around on the enemy planet. Inkjet being used to, to kind of defend against that Zipcaster here. And that each is going to shred a crab tank on the side of Xena. Can we see Silly Kitties keep putting on the pressure? But no, the ball plate goes down. That backline, crucial part of their pressure. Yeah, both sides have a power clam now. So it's going to be quite the bloodbath. A very careful play. But the Stamper is going in for a bit of a flank. Spotted out by the T-Tac. Who wins? It's a trade. No specials on this side of Silly Kitties for the defense. This ball point is in a very awkward position, and they're gonna be punished for it. Xena is gonna get a very solid push right here, unless Silly Kitties can stop them right now. Yeah, 62 points is quite nice. We still have one clam they can use to stall, and it goes in. Ninja Fan even jumping out after that one. Just gonna reset here, maintain their control, no risk dying. And Xena sets... Xena sets them up quite nicely here, off though. That one extra clam was really good because now Silly Kitties needs more than two power clams in order to take the lead. Yeah, and it doesn't do much damage. Only 20 on the penalty, meaning a power clam is enough to break through that penalty barrier. And it Silly looks like they had one clam to sink, but the Silly carbon roller goes down very soon after. splash matic gonna get a pick. Can Jumping. they get any more? Jumping in with the pity to take the lead by a whole 11 points. That's really good. They slowly trickled their clams in, realizing they to burst through that huge lead that Xena set up. So we played a bit slow, waited to get that, waited to get that second power climb in. And then the crab tank, last exploding shot, actually gets a kill. This oh. is looking good for Silly Kitties as we're currently two down. Power climb going in right before. They get taken out. Oh, are we gonna see a lead? We are gonna see Xena take the lead from Silly Kitties. Yeah, I Can think they Jade get just... any more clams in, though? Uh, yeah, a power clam! Nice. They are... Silly Kitties is within kill range for Xena right now. Power clam going in. One clam wins the game. Nami trying to play fast and they get it! They got it! What a shot. I didn't know if it made a scoped version of the of the clam. That was maximum range. I think they might have played off of a uh, squid roll to get a little bit more momentum than just maximum range right there. I wish we had a replay feature because that would be in the highlights for this tournament. Absolutely, Absolutely. very nice shot from the side of Xena, and they're going to be taking another W.
Could we see them take this next game and win the set, or are the Silly Kitties gonna make us go to a game 5? I don't think so. Xena showed dominance. Well, right there in Macomart, Xena went from. If we look back on Surgeon Shipyard, Xena, I thought her mental might be a little bit weak after getting it snagged right at the very ends. But instead, they're just showing them that you're not stealing an overtime from us because we're, we're not going to let you get to overtime again. And especially on a map like Mahi Mahi Resort, if Xena can set up, take mid, and then push through after a wipeout. It could be over before it begins for Silly Kitties. Absolutely. If you thought Manta Maria was small, then we went to Make Mart. If you thought that was small, now we're on Mahi Mahi Resort. Silly Kitties just might not have any space to work with this match, especially on Splat Zones. Very hotly debated map mode. What are your opinions on this one, Snowy? Uh, you, you know me. Played with me enough to know. Mahi Mahi is the best map in the game. If you don't like Mahi Mahi, it's because you fell in the pool one too many times. And here we are in match four. From the side of Silly Kitties, we're gonna see an E-leader coming out. Not surprised. Mahi Mahi known as Sniper Menace map. But can this ball point compare against the power of that E-leader? It's a respawn punisher. Last ditch effort. This E leader is meaning business. Silly Kitty's taking the lead. E leader looking out for some good picks, taking out the ball point right away. And the stamper having to run away. Sasha Machine on the side of Silly Kitty's going down. E leader <laughs> going down. This zip caster is getting a lot of work. Insane value from that zip caster. Xena started out by taking some awkward positions, but getting that E-Leader out lets everyone move back into mid. Yeah, but Crab Tank being shredded. But Very still, unfortunate. Still maintaining control. Crab Tank being popped on the side of Silly Kitties to kind of take mid. Every second, they're not painting that mid. The leaf's just going to grow and grow. There we go. Silly Kitties finally popping it over, but right away, going back to the side of Xena. Just getting that penalty applied to them and Silly Kitty is taking the lead. We oh, think they're coming out, but looks like it gets immediately shredded by the splash o -matic. Yeah. There's so much object shredder being used by both sides here to kind of counter all the crap. It's no surprise that Wave Breaker doesn't really stand much of a chance. And here's what I mean, Octo. We are seeing Xena's trying to push into the enemy and just not letting them get even close to contesting the point. Very true. Looks like we might see it. Oh, and never mind. We're not going to see a zip caster because the stamper goes down. Yeah, unfortunate splat bomb awareness there. Crab versus crab duel. The crab being shredded then instantly killed. Silly Kitty is taking the point back, but they need to get 36 points if they want to take the lead here. There's a lot of paint coming out from the side of Xena, and they are going to get the zone. Silly Kitty is just not unable to keep up right now. Inkjet getting another kill. They are staggered. Yeah, they really need to group up here. And the Zipcaster is saying, there's no way I'm letting that happen. Going back, such a great special on a map like this. You can go in, pressure super hard, and get back to safety relatively easily. Good special pressure coming in from the side of Xenia. Bomb coming in, 27 points to go. Do you think Red, do you think Silly Kitties has a chance here? It's still very possible. There's two and a half minutes left in this game, but Xena's taking the zone again. Silly Kitties are going to have to just take on the same strategy that Xena is using right now. Get them out, go into their plat, and keep that pressure up, especially with that E-Leader. You should have eyes on the whole map. Yeah, if this E-Leader is giving them a chance to... Very good chances. Push from them right now. Down to 50 points already. Just a little bit longer, and then they... Oh, and e -leader. the timer is starting to get very close. Are we going to see Silly Kitties take a lead? Good kill coming out. 
There we go. Forcing that club backwards. And Silly Kitties get a lead just in the nick of time. One point lead, exactly. Penalty points are going to tick down relatively quickly for Beside Xena here. But Silly Kitties, all they have to do is take back one time and hold for a bit. A minute 20 left on the clock. They've got to... They've got to hold this neutral, otherwise they're just about out of time. We're going to see penalty lead points. coming in from the side of uh, Xena right now. More than lead, Octo, with three people going down on the Silly Kitties and ten points left. I don't think they can make a comeback. Xena here, very good comp, very good application of pressure, and a very, very good series win for them. Absolutely. I think that they put on a lot more pressure than they needed to even. I want to say that early on, they were showing a bit of overaggression, losing out to Silly Kitties in the first match in crucial moments. But I, I think, think they, they just got, got the secret sauce. sauce. Perfect there. Just the just right amount of pressure so that they're not risking more than they have to, but, but also not letting the Silly Kitties get close to that point. And in that perfect balance, we saw not only were they making great macro plays, but they were basically never faltering with their aim. That Stamper was getting so many very clean picks, especially with the Zipcaster. To the untrained, it can be very difficult to play around it from those awkward angles. Yeah, and just Nightmare Situation Mary is very, very strong. But we saw that Azina played around that perfectly. Absolutely, and Zena is going to be moving on to the finals after that set, taking three points for themselves with only one loss to the Silly Kitties. Exactly, and Octo, with the knowledge, Uchu continued to beat Silly Kitties fairly dominantly. I think we were only through our first match uh, in the fourth round of the Swiss, when we got that message that Choo Choo beat Silly Kitties. So, do you think Xena can do the same to Choo Choo Continued if they win? If the Silly Kitties were putting up this strong of a fight against Xena, I do not think so. Well, the good news is we're going to be able to find out. Choo Choo Continue went 3 0 against Dark Masters. So, a bit of a bit of a repeat special. We just saw what Xena can, but we have not seen Choo Choo continued yet this tournament. But we're gonna be able to watch him in the grand finals. Sendu badge on the line for one of these two teams. Right after this break.
Welcome back from a break, everybody. We are in the grand finals of the Six Ever Coral Clash. Our two teams are going to be Choo Choo Continued versus Xena Buckle Our Shoe. Octo, we just saw Xena play against Silly Kitties. Do you think we can expect the same performance against Choo Choo Continued? It's going to be very difficult. We've seen from the stats in the background that Choo Choo Continued has been continually destroying their opponents so it's a little hard to say but i think that we're gonna see a lot of victories from the side of choo choo continued xena buckles our shoe might be able to put up a fight or they might be able to take a victory but we're gonna have to wait for the first match to start yeah i think this could go either way if xena doesn't fall prey to a little bit of that mental pressure we've all felt in Grand Finals before, I think that they can definitely put up a good fight against Choo Choo Continued. Double Crab can be quite dangerous, and I'm not sure if Choo Choo Continued is expecting it. Very true, or they could be running a Double Crab of their own, especially on Makamart Rainmaker. I think, again, it's going to be very good. We saw Cena getting success with it last set. And like I said repeatedly, if it's not broken, don't fix it. I think that we're going to be seeing Double Crab from Xena, and we could see Double Crab from Choo Choo. At the very least, they probably have won. Yeah, I mean, realistically here, Xena has a bit more practice. They played four rounds compared to Choo Choo's three. So they could be a little bit warmer, have a little bit more of that top bracket, top bracket shakiness worked off. But without much knowledge of Choo Choo Continued, it's tough to say who's going to be taking home a win this time. Well, and Xena Buckles Our Shoe has lost games throughout this tournament. Has Choo Choo Continued even lost a match? I'm not quite sure. Just checking the stats, I don't think Choo Choo Continued has dropped a match before. But that doesn't mean they can't bleed. Xena might just be their kryptonite. But enough talking about the teams, let's talk about what everyone wants to know. How many splash o -matics do you think we'll see in the first match? I think at the very least we're going to see three, but my bet is on exactly three. Exactly three splash o -matics. Now, not counting Neos, I suspect we might see... Might see more, maybe... Four splash four splash matics or at least three splashes and a Neo. I know Including Z Splash Matic Neo, we might see a fourth, but only if it's a Neo. Those Stri Strikes could be very good to push. Especially with multiple crab tanks on the opposing side. But unless you're fighting multiple crab tanks, Tri Strike can admittedly nowadays be a much more difficult special to get value out of than it used to be it has fallen off a bit yeah and i think we're just about ready to hop into the match here looks like our teams are ready to go besides for one but there we go we are loading in to our first grand final match I hope everyone got for a popcorn during the break because you're not going to take your eyes off the screen. Two splash o -matics. There we go. Three splash o -matics and a splash Neo. Well, looks like I lost the bet, Snowy. Guess I'm going to give you 10 bucks after this. You don't get paid enough for that, Octo. Choo Choo continued in yellow. Xena buckles our shoe in blue. And the pop is going to go over. Now one pick is being found by Choo Choo here. We're getting two, only trading out that 52. Three going down on the side of Xena. And Xena Choo is alone currently. Oh, that splash was isolated, and the Rainmaker is going to get a very quick sink on that left checkpoint. Running into the face of that crab tank, quite a risky play, but paying off. And now Choo Choo not relenting, getting that about 50% charge on the shield. Two and two going down. But Choo Choo is not relenting. They're just going to ride the rails all the way into 24 point range. Xena has a tall order if they want to come back from this first match. 
Very true, but at least the Rainmaker's in a spot that Choo Choo can't do anything about it other than wait for it to reset and get that pop again. Yeah, but I think Choo Choo prefers that because they're able to play into mid, which is already painted, hold some pressure, and now they're just going to get a quick pop again and leave that Rainmaker until they take a bit more pressure. The Slashing Machine is going to be found out. Kind of bad to lose that Booyah Bomb, but I don't think Choo Choo's going to be too worried. Just We're seeing two crabs thing. dueling each other on the left side of the map. Who's gonna win? Looks like the crab from the side of Choo Choo got shredded first. Oh, oh. the follow-up play. Slash a slashing machine into a burst bomb. Three people on the side of Xena going down. And now Choo Choo, we're gonna go to the left again, not risking right with those quick respawns. Just gonna play a bit slowly here. This is what we like to see on Rainmaker. Take the time, get those picks before you push in. You don't have to do it fast, you have to do it smooth. And smooth it is! Good white boat coming in from the side of Xena, but already just sitting at 7 points. Well, Xena hasn't scored at all. Absolutely smooth movement from that Rainmaker there. Choo Choo just has the literal momentum to bring it forward. Yeah, and this is what we like to... Never and mind. flank and end the game without anyone realizing. That's certainly a way to end a match, folks. Uh, Xena. Xena was not expecting that. This whole time we have been seeing Choo Choo play together excellently, and then you just send one person off by themselves to quickly pick, pick up, up that Rainmaker and dunk. dunk. Octo, yes. do you do you think that Xena can do anything to show more resistance in this upcoming match? It's very difficult. Choo Choo continued to have amazing special usage. I think that Buckles R Shoe really just needs to get some more fluid special usage, keep their paint up, and not get uh not take fights where they're 1v2ing, 1v3ing, because Choo Choo Continued is taking every opportunity they get to multi-man a single opponent. Yeah, and especially Flounder's Height, it's going to have a lot of those flake routes, especially on splat zones. But if Choo Choo can take both the zones and push forwards, flanks aren't going to matter, because you'll just be able to hold the enemies into their spawn, as we've seen so many times before in this tournament. Very true, and Flounder is an extremely lockout heavy map. Slightly less so on Splat Zones, that rail is a very nice tool for poking with bombs. But if we see a ball point coming out again from either side, whoever gets the advantage is going to have a lot of advantage. Yeah, and the way Choo Choo's been playing this entire tournament, as much as I want to see the underdog Xena win this, I don't think there's much of much of a chance. Now, I believe we're just waiting for both teams to lock in. Just one more person on the side of Choo Choo to lock in here. Maybe having a bit of a strategy meeting. And sorry, it is Scorch, Scorch Gorge Clans. I misread the graphic on the stream. Oh, looks like I did too. We are on Scorch Gorge Clams, not Flounder Heights. Very difficult map mode for myself, and I think that Choo Choo Continued is going to get that lockout domination here. Yeah, fortunately... For... <sighs> I don't think there's a fortunately when you're running a double splash with the slash machine number 52. Having that wall, having that booyah, tri-strikes, crowds, that's everything you want to be able to push the enemies back and hold brilliantly right at that basket. Absolutely. But they are taking a little long to get that mid control, but the tri-strikes going out, they are pushing forward. Two down on the side of Xena, but two are down on the side of Choo Choo Continued. They have the crab tank, but can they keep pushing forward with it? Splash is going into their plat. Yeah, that early score for the side of Choo Choo, it doesn't have to get a lot of points. All they want to do is put the pressure onto the side of Xena moving forwards. Now, another power being picked up on the retreat is nice. The Zipcaster not being able to find anything, unfortunately. 
But Xena's trying to mount a little bit of a counterattack here. They have one clan ready to go. They still have that pity. Unfortunately, one of her splashes is being caught out by the side of Choo Choo now. No specials up for Choo Choo, but just the inkjet remaining jumping out. This isn't what you want to see if you are a fan of Xena. And boom, another power into the basket. Less than 60 points to go. And that ball point is going to be trying to paint for their lives right now, but that Booyah Bomb is just going to continue pushing them back. They've pulled out the inkjet, and it looks like they have been able to create enough space to let that basket expire and close. Yeah, they made enough space, but I don't think they made enough of an impact. Because 29 with a 28 point barrier, we just saw from 70 to 29. I think this is more than capable of one bad fight leading to Choo Choo taking a win. The Stamper finding a nice pick but being traded off and now two people are down on the side of Xena. You need to have at least three people if you want to set up a defense. Two power plants going to expire, one being picked up, thrown into the basket right away. It doesn't matter if you have a pity if the match isn't going to go to overtime. And all the special usage coming out from Choo Choo continued. They are just going to continue locking Xena out. Yeah, only one clam. Picking up a second is the splash, getting it down to 13. Five clams will win this. And there's three right now in the court. The 52 gal's going to be on pickup duty, has to get those in, and they do. There we go. Just a nice, quick one two for Choo Choo. All they need is two more just like that and they'll take home the one of the sendu badges yep like we said you can't get reversed if you don't let the game go to overtime and choo choo is living by that philosophy right now well choo choo is living by the philosophy you can't get reversed if you just always win the maps now moving on to finder heights we talked about it a bit so i won't go back there but do you think Xena should be changing up her comp here? I do think so. I think that they just have not been able to keep up with the pace that Choo Choo has been putting out the ballpoint, even though it's one of the faster backlines. I think that it's just slowing down their pace a little too much. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate, but right now, what I think needs to happen is lose the ball point, get a shooter, and just watch your flanks. If, you, if Xena can take both of the points and they set up a nice defensive hold, don't try to go into Choo Choo's spawn. That's where Choo Choo wants to find you. Just hold your mid, watch your flanks. Don't let, don't let Choo Choo do anything sneaky. They can put up a really good fight in Flounder Heights. Absolutely, but Flounder is a bit of an awkward map for the Stamper. We've seen it been hyped up in chat, but are they going to be able to keep the same effect? Yeah, we're just waiting for one person on the side of Xena to lock in. I think if Choo Choo can take this point, then it might spell disaster. It is best of seven, so first one to four points will win. And let's see if any comp changes were made. Changing out the ball point for a heavy splat wing is an interesting choice here. And it looks like instead of a instead of a ball point, it's gonna be a 52 gal. So really interesting choices for the comps here. That wave breaker is gonna work very well on the walls of this map. One going down already on the side of Xena turned it out. Both splash machines are down early. Crab tank tried to pressure back. And now it's two crabs fighting once another. The first control goes over to the side of Choo Choo. And just so easy to stall out Flounder Heights being a double zoned map. Can a penalty be applied? And yes, there we go, Xena. Giving a penalty over to the side of Choo Choo, who are fighting desperately to make a very short last and indeed. And there we go. But the 52 gal just goes a little bit too far past their wall. They can't back up in time. Yeah, back and forth slugfest. This is a Xena I wanted to see in this series, taking the lead, losing control. But that doesn't matter because we're able to get it again. 
that heavy spotling is putting out a lot of pressure, but that gal gets a pick. Xena is one down. It is 3-3 again. Zipcaster goes out. Zipcaster is down. But it doesn't look like Chuchu are in any hurry to paint up the enemy point. So we're not gaining any points, not applying that penalty. And finally, after a while, now they have to take it all the way down to 76 if they want to get that lead. And it looks like we're going to try to pressure. This is what I was worried about. Holding closer and closer into the enemy spawn, not letting them cl get close enough to contest a point. Choo Choo's got tri strikes, they've got a booyah. Never mind, the sloshing machine pushes just a bit too far out. But it doesn't matter when three other people are dying. Just to stamp her up, respawn's gonna come in. But already, sub 50 for Choo Choo. This is looking like dominance here. Wow. Stamp are going to try to flank, but Choo Choo is expecting that. Getting very close. Less than 25 points to go. Three people going down on the side of Xena. This is not what you want to see. Try strikes just locking out the Sashi machine, giving support to the shooter. Five points left, and I think this is it. Absolutely nothing that Xena could do that game. Choo Choo was defending those zones like it was their newborn child at the end. Exactly, and that is quite unfortunate. Three points on the side of Choo Choo continued here. All they need is one more point, and they go on to getting that Sendu badge. Xena still has a chance to reverse sweep. Going back to Mako Mart for tower control. What do you think, Octo? Are we going to see a clutch reverse sweep? Well, as someone who's done it once before, I would absolutely love to see a reverse sweep here. I think that Xena has the potential. They just need to get that organization together. They have the potential. They just haven't had the execution yet. Yeah, I think as much as I don't like to be a naysayer, I don't think that Xena stands much of a chance if Chuchu continues his dominance. I do agree. I think it is much more likely that Choo Choo Continued will win this set. Man, it especially, not... especially with this next game being Make a Mart Tower Control, that attacker advantage for specials on Tower Control on a small map like Make a Mart, this is probably going to be very disastrous for Xena. Let's see if Xena can bring it back for us. It appears there's just a little bit of a strategy meeting going on in the Xena camp right now. Just waiting to get those final lock-ins ready. Let's see if that little bit of extra time, talk about for game plan, maybe change up for comp, can make all the difference. We saw the heavy switch did wonders early on. As long as they can keep just don't stagger, keep a good defensive line, and don't let the don't let Choo Choo get in your plat. That's all they have to do to win. Absolutely. Switching to that heavy spotling provided them a lot of defender advantage, but once they lost it, it was just over. Because having a backline on Flounder Heights, having to push from low ground into high, it is just much harder with a long range weapon having to clear such steep height all at once. Exactly, so here we are. We're back in Malcomart. This time there is a tower. The comps. Nothing has changed. We'll see if that spells disaster for Xena here as the rollers are going to be quite quick on the side of Choo Choo Continued, continuing to hopefully dominate this series. An early kill going out into the slashing machine duel, two, three, going down on the side of Xena here. But that's not good. First checkpoint going to go over off to the way of Choo Choo Continued in dominant fashion. Booyah Bomb and a Zipcaster ready to go, but the slashing machine is getting taken out. We are seeing a crab tank attempting to hold this tower back, but it's not going to get very much. The Zipcaster goes down three or down on the side of Chucha Continued. Can Xena take mid control, get this tower going? Can they get a push to get the lead and maybe some more? 
Well, right now, I don't want Cena to be taking mid control. I want Cena to be taking flat control. It's not enough to hold mid against a team such as Chuchu Continue, who are so obviously going to aggress as they just did against that Stamper. You need to be taking part of their base. You have to... If you're just holding mid, that's giving them too much opportunity to set up. Xena, unfortunately, four points short of taking the lead. Very slash machine going down. But three people going down on the side of Choo Choo Continue. No one getting on that tower, though. So we're not pushing at a perfect opportunity to. And a kill going over onto the side of Choo Choo Continued. And just staggering the forces of Xena. Not a safe jump by that machine. Might have looked like it when they clicked, but just not in practice. This stagger is going to be spelling a bit of disaster. Tri Strikes going out holding Xena back in their spawn, and they are just running around like ants, Choo Choo is. Yeah, and Choo Choo once again going down, three of them going down, but Xena has to push all the way from checkpoint two to checkpoint two. That's just going to give Choo Choo continued way too much time to get respawns. And look at, even though that slash machine goes down, they're trying to contest mid control, but if Chuchi's not careful here, they might stagger as hard as Xena was. Absolutely. We're seeing a Zipcaster going through, getting a little bit of value. And a bit of a sloshing machine duel on the side. And they trade. Absolutely glorious. But three people going down on the side of Xena. Wipeout for Chuchu continued. And that's going to spell disaster. Look as they go up. They're holding mid. We're just waiting until they have a little bit more reinforcements for everyone, and now we're going to try to take in this enemy plat. Oh, but unfortunately, three of them go down. That crab tank got a lot of value, and Xena needs to do what you said earlier, push into their plat as soon as possible. Get them out. Yeah, you're not fighting for the first checkpoint right in mid. You're fighting for that checkpoint right beside the window. If you're not in the enemy plat, they're going to be in their plat just raining hell upon you. And unfortunately, two people are going to go down up. Three people going down on the side of Xena. And just counter push and counter push from each of these teams. Yep, we're seeing a lot of great action and a lot of reckless action from both sides. Very back and forth right now. Yeah, Sloshy Machine going down on the side of Choo Choo, but matched by the Stamper on the other side. Tri Strike's trying to be used on the tower by a little bit of a defense. And two people going down on the side of Choo Choo continued. But they got it just about to that 38 mark. So the Gal just could not keep up with the amount of paint that they had to deal with going down. Yeah, and here we see Xena just trying to push up, not worried about riding the tower. They know it'll go back to mid by itself. Gal taking their stack. And the tri strikes are coming up from the side of Choo Choo Continued here. Three people going down on the side of Xena. Do you think one minute left on the clock, can Xena bring this back? Anything can happen in a minute, and we're seeing they're going to be making a bit of a push. That stamper is pretty far forward, though. Yeah, Slash Machine going down on the side of Choo Choo Continued. Zip casters up for both teams, ready to be used at a moment's notice. Tri Strike ready to go, but getting taken out before it can be thrown. Using the Wave Breaker, trying to hold mid. Beautiful kill by Xena Stamper there. Two people are down on the side of Choo Choo Continued. This is your time to push. And Xena are going to be scoring points. But they still have to get to 37 if they want to take the lead. Only at 55 points. Oh, Wipe unfortunate. That, that Zipcaster got some value, but it was immediately turned back by Choo Choo Continued. And it looks like Xena is not going to have the time to get back to mid. Yeah, that's what we call a game over wipeout of a business. They get on once, but they can't get on again. And that Even if is... They had, we saw one of those GG try strikes at the end. Yeah, that's an unfortunate 4-0 sweep by the side of Choo Choo Continued. Well, perhaps not unfortunate, because as we just saw, it was very hard-earned.
Sorry about that, everyone. I think my mic cut out there for a second. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around for this safe Coral Clash. That was well played by both teams. Unfortunately, Xena not able to get the Sendu badge this time, but they are someone to look out for in future tournaments. And it appears in third place, Silly Kitties is 2-1 up against Dark Masters. We'll have to see how that plays out later on. But thank you for watching everyone, and I hope you'll join us in future Coral Clash events.